Okay. So for today, we will be covering the following. Ano? Um, writing the survey questionnaire, your questionnaire approval process, and then the sample approved questionnaire. So this will serve as your guide in uh, developing your questionnaire, making sure that um, you have the right information loaded into the questionnaire. It is designed properly and um, it would appeal to the respondents of your choosing or the respondents that are targeted in the study that you have made. Okay. So first, let's cover yung, um tips and uh, what are the things that you must remember in writing the survey questionnaire. So these are just general reminders. Ano po. There's, there is no clear-cut um, rule and steps in terms of writing the questionnaire. Ano po. Kaya may, there could be a little variation between um, professors or evaluators uh, when you give the questionnaire to them for their uh, critic uh, recommendation and approval. So this could change, but again, this will just serve as a uh, as a guide, no, as a tip for you on how you should craft your questionnaire. So first, remember that your questionnaire must be very clear, specific, and direct to the point, or yung tinatawag natin na kiss, ano. Keep it short and simple. Um, example, ano. You have created a question. What is your income? Or nilagay mo din sa uh, under SOP1, the demographic profile, income. So nilagay mo lang yun, ano? that's just a plain question. So it's very vague, general. No, If I were the respondent, or maybe most of the respondent, would have follow-up questions like, income when? Kasi kakapalit ko lang ng trabaho, or kakalipat ko lang. Income for what time period? Right? Uh, kasi I have two jobs. Is it uh, my income uh, in my primary job or my part-time job? Is it just for my my own income or the entire household? Is it net or gross? Before or after taxes? And daming questions, you know? So that's just one example of um, uh, trying no, to eliminate vagueness and uh, not being specific in your question. So whenever you can, make it very specific. No, Minsan sa income, what others are doing is that they are putting in selection. No, For example, ang sasagot sa'yo ay alumni. No? So most likely, their income are just among the entry level incomes right so maybe you can start with 14000 tapos um you put in a range no for example range 1 would be 14000 to 16000 and then uh, 16100 up until uh, 18000 something like that no? so there will be specific ranges where in uh, your respondent will just select okay so that uh, is an example. And if there is something that you are trying to target, like for this one, gusto mo na malaman yung gross, then put in gross income. Now that already answers a lot of uh, questions. So yun, ano, those are some of the things that you can do. Kasi kapag ka nagbigay ka ng survey questionnaire, Google form, hindi ka na mababalikan ng ano eh, um, respondent mo. Right? Eh, unang tanong mo pa lang niya, meron na siya nakita kagad na question, hindi niya alam kung kanino siya babalik. Like, pinagpasa-pasa lang natin yung questionnaire. Pakipasa sa kakilala mo, it gets um, passed from one person to another. Hindi na nila alam kung kanino sila babalik para mag-ask ng question or clarify, uh, clarificatory questions. No? So, let's avoid those things. No? Could you please indicate your household's income in 2020 during the pandemic? So, yan, very specific na yan, ano? That's an example. So, avoid dichotomous questions, no? Such as yes or no exclusively, okay? 
kasi ano siya eh, um, extremes, dalawa lang yung pagpipilian niya, and it produces very limited data. No? Yung yes at no na yan, hindi naman siya ultimately yes at no eh. There might be reasons why I have selected no, or there might be underlying reasons why I have selected yes. Okay? Um, if it's strictly dichotomous, wala siyang median options, very limited yung data natin. And we cannot say na basta uh, parang ano yan eh, sa pula or sa puti. Oo, hindi lang. No, yung parang ganun, hindi, hindi natin binibigyan ng option yung respondents to explain or give a clearer answer to us. No? So whenever you can, avoid dichotomous question. But again, if the question only merits a yes or no answer, then um, by all means, put it. No? Okay? Kaya nga lang, census ang mangyayari doon. It's not going to be um, a question that pertains to a certain research. Okay? So, yan. Keep answers mutually exclusive and avoid crossovers. Like, for example, yung sinabi ko kanina, no, salary. Ginamit mo na yung 15,000, tapos ginamit mo sa pangalawang option mo, starting point ulit is 15,000. So, malilito yung respondent. Nag-crossover yung salary mo. 14,000 to 15, tapos nag-start ka 15 to 16. So, uh, lagyan mo siya ng clear line, no boundary between the two. So, if it ended in 15,000, then you might as well start with 15,001. Or it, in order for you to avoid that, pwede mo sigurong 14,000 to 14,999. Yung mga ganun, ano? Just avoid crossovers or make it mutually exclusive. Okay. Remove universal statements such as never, none, always. This is very similar to dichotomous questions. Ano? Kasi kapag never, no, it might be extreme and hard for customers to commit to that answer. No, like um i i don't know how could how i can explain this to you you know pero for example may pagpipilian ka tapos always and never lang in your mind you're saying na hindi naman talaga never eh. it's just that meron na ako mga conditiones para ako mag uh, always o sumagot ng always no in parang there um naghahanap siya ng middle option between always and never so the more the options are, the better. No, but again, uh, it's balancing. Eh. Hindi naman pwedeng sobrang dami. Kasi pag sobrang dami, um, the danger naman is making your survey questionnaire too long. So we, we also don't want that to happen. Okay? Use approved time-tested rating and scale. So for any question or any type of study, meron na yan siguradong questionnaire online that has been done already. Kaya nga, um, I always urge my students to read literatures. Kasi kapag nagbasa kayo ng literature, makikita nyo na kagad kung ano yung questionnaire na gagamitin. Like uh, for one of your groups no, about uh, leadership. No, yung leadership in um, fast food. So there is already an existing tool to measure leadership, particularly transformational and transactional leadership. Hindi, ka na, hindi mo na kailangan mag-craft. Da-downloadin mo na lang yung questionnaire mo na yun, and then pag sinagutan mo yun, there is a um, a method on how to compute. Like for example, sumagot siya ng... Um, for example lang, sinagot niya letter A sa number 1. Ang katumbas nun ay 1 point. No? And then you will calculate later on. And then after calculating, it would already give you an idea na siya, whether siya ay transformational leader, transactional leader, laissez-faire na leader, so on and so forth. So, that's just one example. Kung ano man yung topic na meron kayo, I'm very sure na may makikita at makikita kayong questionnaires online. You just need to um, spend time looking you know, for, for such questionnaires. Now, of course, now the next question to that is that, sir, wala na may exactong-exacto dun sa ano ko eh, yung gusto talaga naming mangyari na time ng pandemic at gusto namin ganito kasi yung respondent. Okay, 
totoo naman yun ano um and i will answer that later on during the um questionnaire approval process okay so know, know who your respondents are and what is their vocabulary so for example uh, you are writing a um um what do you call this? No? A research for IT. Capstone. No? So, sige, sa IT, naintindihan nila what is AVR or UPS. If, for example, yung in-interview mo or, or yung sinurvey mo, hindi naman IT graduate. No? Tapos ginamitan mo ng maraming jargon, abbreviations, etc. Hindi nila alam yan. Eh, no? So, it is similar to rule number one. No? Um, it would just create more questions and mas matatagalan yung respondent. Or baka worse, they will not answer your question. Paglalaroan na lang nila, no? Maglalagay na lang sila ng kung ano-ano. Kasi hindi naman nila naiintindihan. Eh. So, for example, what do you prefer? AVR or UPS? So, in the mind of um, a respondent who is not familiar, sasabihin niya, what is AVR? Ano yung UPS? Ano ba yung difference ng dalawa? Okay? So, maybe if you are... Uh, Planning to ask this, make sure that somewhere in your cost, uh, in your survey, there is a uh, an information or an intro to what these two things are. Para alam niya, ah, okay, alam ko naman tong AVR, hindi ko lang alam na yun pala ang tawag doon. Yun pala ang meaning no, no, no. Pero meron kami niyan sa bahay kasi madalas mag-fluctuate yung kuryente dito eh. Nasisira yung appliances. So yeah, meron kami yung ganyan. Ah, meron din kami niyang UPS, no? provides backup para kahit mag-brown out, meron kami parang some sort of a generator, right? So maybe the respondent is already familiar with this, hindi lang niya alam yung technical terms or the jargon. So avoid jargons, no? Um, or if you will be using that, make sure that you have defined it first, okay? So maybe kung gusto nyo, ilagay nyo sa unahan ng questionnaire nyo, uh, all throughout the, the survey, we will be using this term. So yun yung meaning niya. Okay? Para later on, kahit yung um, jargon na lang ang gamitin niyo or yung abbreviation na lang, alam, makakasunod na si respondent. Okay? Or what is their vocabulary? Di ba... There will be cases wherein you need to prepare questionnaires both in English and Tagalog. No? For example, your respondents are um, your respondents are um, mga hindi nakapagtapos ng pag-aaral. No? Example lang yan. Ha? No? Hindi nakaabot ng high school. Let, let's say yun yung iyong research tapos ginawa mong questionnaire English hindi, hindi tayo sigurado baka mamaya no, hindi naman sa minamal, minamaliit natin or we're judging the capacity of the respondent but what we're trying to do is avoid um, wasting time no? kasi kinausap mo na yan eh, papasagutin mo na siya tapos hindi niya masagutan kasi hindi niya maintindihan yung nababasa niya. So, make sure that these uh, things are planned properly. No? Kung sa tingin ninyo, your respondents wouldn't be able to understand it, then prepare a Tagalog questionnaire. Yun ang palagi ko sinasabi. No? If you think that they can answer uh, the survey questionnaire in English, then there's no need to prepare. Kasi... Um, additional time yun for you eh, to craft another questionnaire or translate it properly in Tagalog. No? And kapag ka dalawang questionnaire ang gagawin nyo, dalawang approval process din ang gagawin natin. Okay? Kasi hindi naman automatic na tama sa English, tama na kagad sa Tagalog eh. Vice versa. No? But the, again, do not sacrifice the quality of data just because gusto mo mapabilis. No? Uh, again, kasi sayang yung ano eh, no? sayang yung time and effort natin and the possibility of getting data, no? the right data, just because hindi, hindi mo ginawa ng maayos yung survey questionnaire. Okay? Ito, I can't emphasize this, ano? Grammar. 
punctuations. Ang dami umaabot na ng fourth year, hindi pa marunong mag-past tense, present tense, at future tense. Palaging gamit na gamit ng ED. Parang awa nyo na, no? Pa -pa Pasuyo lang, please, pacheck nyo muna. Kasi nakakaya eh. For example, lalagay mo doon, graduating or um, student of research, uh, I'm sorry, student of economics from the Bulacan State University. Tapos yung questionnaire, puro mali-mali yung grammar, puro ano, no? <laughs> sorry ah, medyo OC ako sa grammar, ano? Kasi, ewan ko, baka dahil nang galing ako sa BP or business communication yung isa sa forte ko, no? In the past. Pero ako talagang ano ako dyan, eh, naiirita ako pag nakakita ako dyan. Pero hindi naman ako nag-ano online. Hindi <laughs> ko pa pinapansin. No? Hindi ko naman sila kinokorek. No? Pero what I'm trying to say is that uh, ang lakas ng loob natin mag-English, mali-mali naman yung nakasulat. No? We are just um, opening ourselves to the humiliation and ridicule of people. No? So, huwag kayo mahihiya ha? Ito, no, hindi dahil gusto mong ipahiya yung kaklase mo or yung ka-groupmate mo. Pag mali yung grammar, i-correct mo na. No? Nakita mo, mali yung grammar ng kasama mo, correct mo. No? Hindi naman dahil na mamahiya ka niyan. Eh. Mas mapapahiya yung buong grupo kapag flinote nyo na yan, mali-mali yung grammar. Okay? So, isipin mo na lang na you care for your groupmate and pagkamali yung uh, tense niya, you correct it. Okay? Kasi again, when you go out, hindi naman niya maaalala yung pangalan mo, eh. hindi, niya, hindi naman niya makikita na, ah, si Arlene yan, ah, si Jeric yung nag-float niyan, ah, si Noemi yung nagpasagot niyan. Ang maaalala nila, yung pangalan ng BSU. No? So, makikita nila yung name of the school. Ay, ganun pala yung mga taga, ganun ng school, mali-mali yung grammar, nakakatawa. Tapos alam mo naman yung tao ngayon, eh, yung lahat na lang screenshot. Ay, ganito pala yung ginawa. ba diba? Yung sa module nga lang ng DepEd, mali-maling grammar. ba diba? Nakakahiya, no? Pinagtatawa na ng mga tao. Teacher yan, tas mali-mali yung grammar. ba diba? Ganon. So, please, no, um, do diligence for everyone, ano? Again, group yan, ano? We work as a team. Uh, meron mga bagay na kasi po, po, for example busy yung uh, group leader or busy yung ganitong member sa pag kanya-kanyang toka yan eh um, ano na lang tulungan na lang ano check somebody make sure to check the grammar kasi once it's uh, published everybody sees it everybody can record it take screenshots share with social media so on and so forth so we want to avoid that Okay. Sabi nga nila eh, bad grammar kills people. No? Totoo yan eh. So you say, I like shooting friends and family. <laughs> so iba pala yung ibig sabihin. Ano, ano? Ang gusto mo palang sabihin, uh, these are three different things. I like shooting, I like friends, and I like family. So punctuations naman yan. Ano? So ganun din, when you write your um, questionnaire, proper punctuation. Okay? Pag kailangan ng period, you put period, question, exclamation point, comma, etc. So remember again, ano, treat it as if you are applying and you have written your cover letter, you're writing your resume, first impressions last. So kung ano makita nila doon, yun na kagad ang iisipin nila sa inyo. Okay? Eliminate bias. So, all throughout the research, sinabi ko yan, ano, na we don't want to sound biased. No? For example, yung pagkakakraft mo ng question is that you are trying to imply what is your choice or kung ano yung preference mo. No? Gusto natin malaman whether the social media influencers are really impacting customers' choice. Okay? So, you ask it properly. Eh, ito kasi, for example, yung pagkakakraft niya, we think. Na sinabi, sinir mo na kagad, what is your opinion and what is uh, your preference? So, it already tarnishes the the research, the questionnaire. No? Kasi, 
Ah, yun pala yung preference nila eh. No? So, yun na lang din yung sagutin natin. Right? So, ask it directly. Do not put anything that would um, probably affect, no? Or, or make it sound biased, no? Affect the judgment of the respondent. Again, ito palagi ko sinasabi. And even when I am evaluating questionnaires in the past, make it short and simple. Okay, yung iba kasi sa kagustuhan nila ng parang gusto talaga nila eh lahat ng information nakalagay doon. Naintindihan ko naman yung ano no, yung intention. Well, uh, and I applaud the intention, but the intention might um harm no, the process of getting data. Tandaan natin yung mga sasagot busy din yan ano? hindi lang kayo yung busy hindi lang yung teachers yung busy yung mga magsasagot busy din yan may mga kanya-kanya rin silang ginagawa no so kayo i trust your judgment on shortening the survey questionnaire no kasi kunwari nag-answer siya google form lang naman eh hindi naman siya dati kasi di ba piprint pa nila yan no mas matrabaho yung dati yung, yung face to face they would have to print it check Tapos, uh, pagka nakuha na nila, itatali pa nila mano-mano. Napakahirap, di ba? Kayo ngayon, andali na lang eh. Kasi you will just make a Google form and then you will just make the Google form and then uh, from there, no, matatali na kagad siya yung matatali na kagad yung uh, results natin. Okay? Eh, pagka sobrang haba ng survey mo, tatama rin yung ano no tatama rin yung mag answer kasi busy siya eh marami siyang ginagawa so also this is an idea for you na find the right time uh, for these people to answer the question or wag niyo naman sila lagyan ng time limit na sabihin niyo na you uh, can answer it at your most convenient time ni naman namin kayo minamadali no so eh, papaano sir 270 lang yung respondents namin Siyempre, hindi mo ibibigay sa 270 lang. Pasobrahan mo na, no? Pasobrahan mo na ng konti, no? For good measure. Kasi merong iba dyan, hindi na nila sasagutan yan. Right? And then what you can also do at the back end, sa Google Form kasi, you can generate the Google Sheet. So real-time, na-update yun. Anybody, anytime na may nagsasagot, na-update ng na-update yun. So makikita mo whether nadadagdagan siya. So, from then, malalaman ninyo as a group, no, you can adjust. O, kulang pa tayo ng 20. So, gawa natin ng paraan nito. No? Magdagdag tayo ng uh, 20 more people who will answer. Kasi baka mamaya hindi na nila ito masagutan, busy sila, ganon. Na-overlook na nila. Okay? And then, let's go to the approval process. Okay? So, um... Ito, most of this I have already discussed earlier, no? Design the information, target question, uh, target respondents, no? Iba-iba kasi yan, eh. Meron, meron ang respondents nila, mga bata, ganito yung income, or taga ganitong lugar, ganitong barangay. Choose the method. Our method is going to be purely online through Google Form. Decide on question content. Develop the wording. Put questions into a meaningful order. Check the length. Pre-test the questionnaire. Pwede nyo i-pre-test yan. Ano? The pre-test does not mean na, ay, sir, mag kami ng respondent. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying with pre-test is that, let's say, on your uh, on your end, kayo-kayo, magkakagrupo, you check the questionnaire. Baka mamaya, meron dyang question na required question, hindi makaproceed yung um, respondent. O di kaya, yung pagkakagawa nyo ng Google Form requires check-in. E paano kung yung mga sasagot ay wala naman silang Google account? Kunwari, ang pagpasasagutin natin, mga ano na, um, mga retired at saka mga medyo matatanda na, no? Mga senior. Sa tingin nyo, may mga Google account pa yan. Wala na sila, syempre, di ba? So, of course, with that, Tanggalin nyo yung mga filter na yun, ano? And that could be um, addressed when you pre-test the questionnaire on your own. Kayo-kayo, pagtingin niyo ay parang pangit pala tong part na to, no? Hindi makita or hindi ako maka-go to next. 
kasi meron isang hinihingi na uh, may may isang hinihiling sagot na hindi ko kaya may provide so on and so forth so that would all be uh, prevented if you pretest the questionnaire on your own or kahit sa mga kaklase niyo oy uh, be paki-check nga ito tingin mo okay na ba maganda ba yung uh, pagka-design so on and so forth and then you develop the final survey form and then dito papasok yung review process by at least three experts. Sa grad school, ano, pagka nagde-develop kami ng questionnaire, um, we give it to at least 10 experts and we require their signatures. No? So, paano ba yung review process? Okay, so ganito. No? Let me show you first this form. Okay, so this is the sample uh, survey questionnaire. Let me just zoom it. Okay, so I will send this format to you. No? So what you would have to do is lalagay ninyo yung title of your research here and then who are the group members in partial pro uh, fulfillment of sa inyo Bachelor of uh, economics na science and economics and then who is going to evaluate it sino ba ang magi evaluate so ilalagay niyo yung pangalan niya diyan no? for example dr campos um lagay niyo yung kanyang designation na department head of uh, business and management evaluator and then he must sign it or she must sign it whoever is the evaluator so i would be requiring three of this no tatlo ang kailangan ko nito okay and then immediately after this page will be your survey questionnaire so ilalagay mo na yung na develop ninyo na survey questionnaire okay dito na siya nakalagay so we need three of this no so Paano yung evaluation process? Um, of course, meron tayong evaluation process na gagawin. And yung evaluation process will be directly sent to the um, evaluator or the professor. And then, ako na ang makakakita ng score niya. Okay? Yung mga um, recommendations niya, I will share it with you. Pero yung score ako yung magkikipa. No? Kasi kapag kasi inyo yung shinere yung score, of course, medyo mahirap yun. Ano? Kasi baka mamaya mahiya si professor o di kaya hindi niya maibigay yung totoong recommendation niya kasi sa inyo niya ipapadala. Or worse, i-alter ng student no? yung recommendation and yung score. Hindi naman sa pin hindi pinagdududaan yung student. Ano? It's just na it would be better if the, the recommendations would go directly to me. So, um, this form will be shared with you and ibibigay ninyo siya sa inyong um, evaluator or professor. No? So, lalagay niya yung name niya dyan. Pakisabi sa kanya kung anong group kayo. Group 1 po kami under economics. So, BE4A. Kung nga, group 1 po kami. So, para alam ni Prof kung ano yung ititik niya. And then, from here, they would rate no, your uh, questionnaire in terms of the following. So first would be, criteria would be word choice, whether, uh, the pro uh, whether the word choice was appropriate, considers ethical, moral, and other privacy matters of the respondents. Punctuation, spelling, and grammar is another criteria. Sequence, arrangement, and order of the questionnaire is another criteria. Question content, understandability, and relevance to the questions or the title of the study is also another criteria. And then finally, they will place in whatever recommendation and changes they would want to see in the questionnaire. Ako na lang yung makakakita nito. As, uh, but, uh, sorry, I will share it with you. Yung points, akin na yun. Ano? Ako na, ako na mag-accumulate. Ah, ano, 
Okay? So there. So ganun po yung gagawin natin, ano, class. Um, let me just end the recording.